Hi, this is Mary Morgan of the Morgan Network. Welcome to Marketing Sense. Today I'm delighted to be asking my friend and colleague Wendy Critt three questions about marketing these days. Greetings, Wendy. For people that don't know you, tell us about you and what you do. Um, I'm Wendy Critt, as Mary said, and I'm currently the Senior Director of uh, Global Consumer Relations at Kraft Foods. I've been at Kraft for 26 years in various capacities, from marketing to consumer promotions, and most recently leading our global consumer relations function. Now for the three questions. Question one, what should be on every marketer's mind in dealing with consumers? What should be on every marketer's mind? That is a great question, Mary. Um, when you think about marketing, it's the same as it's always been. Marketing is about understanding consumer needs and fulfilling against those needs with a product or service, and then finding the right people who are going to act and buy a product or buy a service um, and become loyal consumers. What's changing is many different things. Um, the channels that consumers get information from have exploded. So consumers as a result are more um, savvy, they're more um, informed, and as a result, marketers need to be more sophisticated too in how we deal with consumers. Um, the whole world of online, digital, and social media through these channels is really what's changing. So it's no longer a one-way dialogue, it's two-way. And it's no longer a short-term engagement, it's a longer-term engagement. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> consumers' expectations have changed significantly. Um, they have higher expectations of service levels of companies, of the performance of a product, and how that product um, is going to meet their needs and perform over time. Uh, the involvement that they want to have with a company in developing a product, and many companies like Kraft have outlets now for consumers to actually do that, and their companies are wisening up to really listen to consumers and act on what they're telling us in terms of product development. Um, and companies are forced to be more transparent based on these expectations that consumers have. So it's more about developing a relationship and having a conversation like we're having today. Um, and a lot of that's enabled through technology. Um, there's dialogue, there's input, there's feedback. And through all of that, consumers are now in control. Marketers are no longer in control of your brand and of your message. You can seed ideas, you can build off ideas, but truly the consumer is going to be in control of that end product. Another aspect of what I think marketers need to think about with consumers today is the economy and the impact of the recession. Because a lot of behaviors changed recently in terms of how people buy the use of coupons, which has exploded. Um, and many of those behaviors are going to be permanent. So how do we as marketers deal with that over time, um, I think is really important. And then lastly, not to be negative, but there's a distrust out there. Um, there's experiences through many recalls recently. Um, we can name the products, whether it's J&J, Toyota, eggs, spinach. Um, through all of that, there's food safety concerns, and there's just a lack of trust. So as marketers, we have to, again, be more transparent. We have to really listen to our consumers. We have to learn from them and then take action so that we're more relevant um, to them because consumers have more choices. And we see a blurring of lines now between marketing and customer service. I think that's one of the important things um, as I look at my role in consumer relations, it's no more a function that's um, in the background and after the fact. We have to be upfront and working with our marketers and anticipate both what consumers are going to say and how they're going to react, but also share information um, in real time and be right with our marketers because customer service and how we de um, deliver that service can be a true marketing advantage uh, for our brands. So I think that there's three keys to success that marketers have to think about. Um, targeting, which is easier than it's ever been before, but social media and other um, technical aspects can help us really fish where the fish are, which is what marketing is all about. Being relevant, uh, making it easy and engaging for people. Uh, your product and service has to be extremely, extremely relevant. And then lastly, integration, because multiple channels, the message can get diffused. There's lots of um, clutter out there and competing messages. So the more you can have repetition, repeat your message, 360 communication is more important than it's ever been before. How do your consumer relations programs vary around the world? 
Um, that's an interesting one as well. Um, I manage global consumer relations, Kraft sells product in over 70 countries, and we have a, a global council that we have formed and that I lead, which has representatives, my counterparts, um, for really every region and every country that we sell product in. And there's a lot of similarities that we see and a lot of differences. One of the biggest things that struck me with my first global council meeting about five years ago was that consumers in various geographies are looking for the same things. They have the same issues, allergen questions about food, wanting to know, um, you know, there's an increase in allergens in the United States, same holds true in Europe and Latin America. Uh, privacy, how, what are we doing with their data, uh, is very relevant to everybody. Food safety very relevant around the globe, uh, as well as healthy eating and just overall health and wellness. So the kinds of questions we get from people are very similar. Um, the degree of knowledge and interest in those questions vary mm -hmm. depending on the geography. Another aspect that changes with consumer relations programs around the world, um, consumer relations is about consumers giving feedback to a company. One aspect of it is complaints. Most people think that's all it is. That's only one aspect. Typically about a third of our contacts are actually complaints. Two thirds are questions, suggestions, that sort of thing. So in certain countries, it's more about complaints and it varies culturally. So you've got certain countries where complaints are very high and the consumers are very engaged. You've got other countries where consumers are happier. <laughs> they are more laid back, They not to generalize or stereotype, but they tend not to complain as much. So that varies a bit. Um, but how um, our sophistication varies by country too in terms of our marketing efforts. Because what we're doing in North America that we're starting to do in Europe and Latin America as an example in Australia too, is look at our consumer relations group truly as a competitive advantage and not just a source of the consumer coming to us, but a source of us being able to um, not only dialogue with the consumer, but also use it for marketing channels. Mm -hmm. These are passionate consumers. These are loyal consumers. They've reached out to us. How can we inform them of new products that are being launched or product changes that have been made that we think would be relevant based on their past contact? So we're starting to do more and more of that, as well as social media is the one thing that's really spreading everywhere. And it's, um, it's up to our group to work with other groups in the company, but the whole listening through social media channels and then engaging with consumers in those channels is really key. Who's your favorite marketer or brand these days and why? Um, I have to say, I have two. Okay, um, fine. And one is the portfolio approach that Kraft is taking with marketing. And I can say that because it's not self-serving because I don't work on it these days, yeah. but I'm very proud to see what my colleagues are doing. Um, Kraft is obviously multiple brands, but what we're doing as a portfolio under the Food and Family banner, for the most part, is impressive. Um, we've got a print magazine that now has over a million page circulation, the website, the, um, our YouTube channel where we have how-to videos, our Facebook page which has over 300,000 fans or people who like us on Facebook. All of that is opportunities for us to engage and have conversation with our loyal consumers. So that's really exciting. And again, it's at a brand level, but it's under the umbrella portfolio for Kraft. Uh, we've also done some really innovative things with our mobile applications. Have gotten a lot of press with our iFood Assistant for iPhone and other smartphones and Big Fork Little Fork, which is the first iPad app for a food marketer. So I think from a Kraft perspective, I'm proud of what we're doing as a portfolio umbrella basis. Um, but as I look at the world and mm -hmm. I think about what touches me and um, I think a lot of people would probably say this these days but I have to say Apple. Mm -hmm. um, when you think of I guess two products I just mentioned the iPhone, the <laughs> iPad, um, the innovation that's being driven out of that company but then also the ads themselves. I've seen iPad uh, commercials recently and I just think they're terrific. So unbelievable innovation and unbelievable understanding of how to reach people with the message. Thanks for taking the time and the conversation.